I'm going to introduce two people from DEP. Uh, George is going to present first, and then uh, Asi English. Yeah. So George Hicks uh, has worked at DEP for 24 years in the uh, municipal water pol pollution control section. He supervises staff engineers for the planning, design, construction, and financing of upgrades to municipal sewage treatment plants and wastewater collection systems. He develops the clean water funding priority list and he has served as a hearing officer for the priority list since 2008. George has a Bachelor of Science and Engineering from UConn and he's a licensed professor, professional engineer in the state of Connecticut. Following him is Oslo Asi Inglis. He has been director, um, director of the Department of Water Permitting and Enforcement Division since uh, 20, um, 2003, Asi Division ASI's division, which is within the Bureau of Materials and Management and Compliance Assurance, implements federal and state programs that regulate industrial, commercial, and agricultural discharges, storm water discharges from industrial, commercial, and construction activities, and municipal uh, separate storm sewer system and domestic sewage discharge from, uh, from large on-site subsurface disposal systems. And there was no period uh, in any of that, so that, <laughs> that, that's the whole sentence. Asi has served in various programs and um, capacities during his um, over 20-year career with the department, starting as, a, um, as an engineer involved in permitting and enforcement of industrial and commercial discharges before his current role. Asi worked in aquifer protection, landfill discharge, permitting, remediation, recycling, and beneficial use, and solid and hazardous waste permitting. Asi has a um, bachelor's degree in geology and geophysics and a master's degree in civil engineering, environmental engineering, both from Yukon. Go Yukon. And he's also a licensed professional engineer. Thank you, Dennis. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have a couple of items to uh, discuss before I begin my presentation. Uh, in the audience today, we have several members from DEEP, and uh, feel free to go speak to them during the breaks. Division Director Denise Ruzica, and then three members of our staff, Rowan Denny, Yvonne Hall, and Stella Morrison. Second, I'd like to update you on a staffing change within our municipal uh, wastewater unit. I'm pleased to announce the promotion of Rowan Denny to supervising sanitary engineer. He will be my counterpart going forward in supervising the staff. Uh, many, of you knew, many of you know Rowan from his 27 years of working within the unit. He has extensive experience in wastewater permitting, operator certification, technical assistance, and project management. Uh, Rowan was also an integral part in coordinating the department's uh, phosphorus reduction strategy, so please welcome him in his new position. Today I'm going to talk about money, politics, and projects. So I'm going to start off with a few slides just talking about, you know, what happened with the development of our, uh, our budgets. <clears throat> so back in February, you look at the top one, and it's uh, Governor Malloy puts out his budget uh, titled The Good, The Bad, where'd it go? The Good, The Bad, and The Unknown. You know, and as it moves forward, uh, it moves into the budgetary train wreck. By April. By September, um, Governing Magazine, September issue, which is nationally distributed, picked this up on the front cover. Money problems, the fiscal mess in America's great richest state, and richer and poorer, how could the nation's wealthiest state become a fiscal basket case? Things do begin to improve, though. Um, in September, the lawmakers did pass the budget, but the governor ended up vetoing that one. And then in October, they passed a bipartisan budget, and it was signed into law. So the topics I'm going to cover today is the development of uh, DEEP's capital budget for the Clean Water Fund program, the uh, state capital budget for fiscal year 18 and 19, and the impact on funding your projects, uh, the call for projects for the development of the next priority list, and types of projects that are likely to be funded. Now, DEEP's capital budget, um, <clears throat> in total, there's typically around 20 capital programs 
And examples include funding for microgrids, state dam repairs, open space acquisition, Connecticut bikeways, cleanup of contaminated sites, energy efficiency projects in state buildings, and the Clean Water Fund program. Um, Clean Water Fund program is typically the largest capital program within our budget, and it generally runs about 80% of that budget. It's prepared every two years, and it's prepared the summer before the legislature meets to develop their statewide capital budget. The development of this capital budget for our Clean Water Fund program involves two items. One is we need to understand what's going to be built between, in this case, it's August of 2016 and the summer of 2019. To do that, we have to figure out how much money we need to complete the current priority list projects and then what's in the next priority list, although we haven't actually developed it, so the timing doesn't actually work out great. It's a lot of projections. We need to understand what those projects will cost and then what the schedule for construction is. Uh, then where does the money come from? So we look at unassigned money that we received from the Bond Commission, and we look to previous year's state capital uh, budget authorizations. And then the balance in the end is the additional money we need is what's in our capital budget request. So this is the capital budget request that uh, we had submitted um, in August 2016. And in it, you'll see, I mean, there's a couple of key categories. It's broken down by fiscal year. Um, but what's key is the grant, the $213 million of grant. The total request was $655 million. So what happened with that budget request? Well, the governor put together his uh, proposed budget, and it was, uh, he was proposing to fully fund the program. The legislature debated the merits of the capital budget throughout the legislative session. And uh, given the challenges the legislature had in coming together to agree to an operating and capital budget, this past September we saw a proposed reduction in our program in grant money. As you know, the legislature ultimately approved it October 26th, and it was signed into law on October 31st. In Deep's capital budget, um, only seven capital programs were funded. However, however the Clean Water Fund did get roughly 90% of the agency's money. But we did uh, receive the reduction in grant funding that was proposed in September. So this is what the uh, program funding uh, is going forward. So what's the impact on the Clean Water Fund program? Well, the grant the grant was reduced from $213 million to $85 million. You can see it in the total. Uh, that's a $128 million reduction in grant. You know, the reason they did that was they want to minimize the borrowing. There's a state bonding cap. It's a calendar year cap. So they go after the grant, and the loan was left intact because that doesn't affect the cap. What's the financial impact to that? Well. A grant reduction of that amount translates into about a $420 million reduction in, in projects that require grant and loan. By statute, we have to match grant, to, grant and loan. Another way to view this budget is that the $85 million that we've been provided translates into about $280 million in projects that we can fund that get grant. Think of CSO removal, small community projects, uh, treatment plan upgrades. There's going to be plenty of money for loan-only projects in the collection system because they didn't touch that. So in summary, there's going to be less funding available for a number of the projects. The good news is that the, uh, they left the previous year's capital budget authorizations intact. Now on a parallel path to uh, working on the capital budget is we move forward to do the call for projects. This is the first step in development of the next priority list, which will be the fiscal year 18-19 priority list. Um, the reason being is we're in fiscal year 18 now. We're operating under the old, which is the current priority list. We have projects that are moving forward to go to bid that are not on the current priority list, so we wouldn't be able to fund them unless we have a new priority list or we revise the old one. So the intention is to move forward and have a new priority list. 
Now, before I review the submissions on what we received, I'd like to um, just offer some comments and suggestions relative to when uh, you guys put together your requests during the call for projects. Um, it's your opportunity to really sell your projects too deep. Uh, you need to fill out the forms that we supply as completely as possible. You need to show that your project is truly shovel ready, meaning able to go to construction by the summer of 2019. Um, otherwise, we can't really consider it on that priority list. It may be subject to a future priority list. Some key information that needs to be filled out is that the project cost for design and construction has been appropriated by the town. Show the intended bid schedule and reference some of the DEP approval documents you've received on your project. Given the state's financial situation, all funding requests from state agencies are heavily scrutinized by the Office of Policy and Management's budget staff. DEEP can't show projects on the prior list that are truly not ready to go to construction during that funding period. This is a summary of the call for projects that we received and I'm breaking it down from the highest level and then drilling into the details. So you'll notice the total of the requests and this is when I've taken out projects that um, were really identified outside of this funding cycle so I removed them but it came out to be $1.3 billion. You had 30 planning projects, 40 design projects and 100 construction projects. Construction dollar amount was the largest at 1.2 billion or 92% of the request. Now I've divided up and looked at the construction projects. So this is the breakdown of the construction projects in nine categories and I've ranked them by the dollar amount. And you'll see that the, uh, you know, the largest one by far is treatment plan upgrades followed by CSO control. Uh, sometimes they compete with one another. This year it's heavily dominant for treatment plan upgrades. Now I've taken the treatment plan upgrades and I'm not sure how well you can see it from where you are, but I've broken them up by fiscal year and then just uh, rank, rank them by, uh, you know, alphabetically. So you can see fiscal year 18, all the projects that are seeking funding to move forward. You can see in the middle uh, table, fiscal year 19, and then over on the right table, it's a little bit uncertain as to which year they're ready to proceed. Total, there's 23 treatment plant upgrades. Uh, some of these do not have um, you know, nitrogen or phosphorus, which is where you get the most points to be ranked on the priority list. So. It's debatable whether when we go through the process they will actually meet the uh, funding, funding line, but generally nitrogen and phosphorus, provided we have funds, uh, you know, rank quite highly. Some of these projects up here also have deadlines because some of them are subject to the uh, phosphorus 50% grant, so there's a deadline to enter into a construction contract by uh, June 1st, 2019. Um, Now, I've shown you basically all the projects that we're looking at moving into uh, treatment plan upgrades over the next two years. So many of these projects are well into design. So while you're in design, these are some of the things that really need to be considered so that uh, you know, there's not a hitch in the process. There's a limited staff to process the work and we need to do it as efficiently as possible. And for some of this work you can do in advance of a final submission that would be uh, quite helpful to, to um, our staff and also to keep your projects moving on schedule. So looking, looking forward into the next priority list, um, what types of projects are likely to be funded? I would estimate it's going to be as it has been in the past. It'll be projects that remove nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus, and CSO control. Uh, we'll probably be able to continue to fund some of the small community projects that we've already started on. They tend to take a very small amount of the budget. And I imagine there will be ample funding available to do collection system uh, work and that will likely be loan only. Uh, we won't know until we go through the whole process of developing the priority list and we're now starting to look at your submissions and then rank them for priority points. So the next steps for us is we're going to develop an issue a draft priority list for comment. 
and then we'll be seeking additional funding from the State Bond Commission because we've got a number of projects that will be moving forward and we will be running, um, we'll be running out of money shortly. Now the Bond Commission typically meets the last Friday of every month. Um, with the exception of November, they don't meet and generally they cancel meetings in the summer. This past year, they only met twice. So in light of that, we're gonna try to seek funding on the January Bond Commission. That way we're at the front of the line for funding since that's the beginning of the uh, state bonding cap that they have to address. Uh, looking forward, I see we'll be very busy for the next two years, both our staff, consulting engineers, and the WPCA with your projects. Currently, we have 54 active clean water fund agreements covering planning or design or construction. A lot of the construction agreements have multiple construction contracts in them. In total, we're managing around $900 million of work today. I expect that depending how things work out, we will have an additional $800 million of more project work. Please stay engaged with our staff engineers. Any additional information that they request will be, uh, we really need to see that early so we can continue to work on these projects um, during the life of the design period. Make your submissions as complete as possible. Uh, the most complete submissions will take less time for our staff to review. We will continue to provide guidance uh, on our website to streamline the process for the towns, the WPCAs, the consulting engineers, and for our staff. Um, ongoing communication in this regard will be through our listserv. If you haven't subscribed to the listserv, please do so. If you have any questions, please see Yvonne Hall today. Uh, best of luck moving your projects forward. We will do everything we can to maintain your schedules. And I want to thank you for the time this morning. And if you have any questions, please feel free to see one of us during the break. Thank you.